Welcome back to our channel. I'm Chris. I'm Ian. And we have two very, very special guests with us today. I'm sure almost everyone who's watching already knows who they are, but Abby and Josh, would you like to introduce yourselves? Yes, this is how we do our YouTube. Okay, Hi guys. guys, I'm Abby Herbert and- And I am Josh Herbert. Here we are. Abby and I first connected when a few of me and Ian's videos first started going viral. I remember I used to go to Abby's channel every night before I went to bed and write down like what my video ideas for the next day were gonna be. <laughs> Cause I wanted to have a few videos for the day and I was like, okay, Abby Herbert's gonna have, like, if I just scrolled down your channel, you would have just so them. many for me to do. And then I remember you commented on a few and you followed and I was like, oh my God, like the literal queen of the TikTok <laughs> challenge. I remember you came up on my For You page and I'm like, okay, okay, these are great videos. Love, love, follow. And then we were just DMing and we were texting all night. And I remember it was like super late our time because we're here on the East Coast. And then it's just been this lovemaking friendship this whole <laughs> the past love time. Making. Love making. <laughs> no, I love Chris. And it's so crazy because we've never met. I mean, you know, we're in COVID times right now. Yep. This is the collaboration we're doing. And it was so cute this morning. Josh isn't the idea guy. He's more, we like to say the talent. Um, but this, there we go. This morning, when we were talking about our collaboration today, Josh was like, you know, with COVID and everything going on, this really sucks. Like, I hope when we get to meet Chris and Ian, our, our first collab we should do in person is we should swap spouses and partners. We're swapping spouses yes. for 24 hours and of I, documenting. And it. I just thought that was so cute because like, you thought of it, you wanted to do it. And My I'm idea. like, wait, we can't do that right now. Like it sucks mm -hmm. that we've never met in person, but I feel like we know you guys. Exactly. So I used to obviously like go down your page and mm -hmm. find all of the videos. When did you guys start making TikToks, especially making challenges? Yeah, so it started back, obviously, when COVID hit, we all lost our jobs. I was modeling full time. Josh was music and doing other little working, jobs. like construction, construction, real estate. He got laid off. I was just not traveling because that was 90% of my job. And then when we shut down, I was like, okay, what am I going to do? All my agents were like, you need to start becoming an influencer. You need to to work and get brands to work with you, you need to grow your following on Instagram, TikTok. And at the time, I think I had like 6,000 followers on Instagram. And I was like, there's no way, how can I grow? How can I grow? So I made my first video on TikTok and it was just of me trying to dance. I posted them the other day on my story. So awkward, so bad. I have no rhythm, like literally no rhythm whatsoever. There's something and there. There's not zero. You have something so, going on. She's wiry. I'm so She's tall wiry. and lanky. I like in my head, I don't care. I'll dance, but like on video, it's just not that cute. And then I posted one video of how we met and it went viral. It got like 2.5 million views. I remember waking up screaming like, oh my God, Josh, this is so crazy. And then I posted another video of just myself. I think it got like 10 views, like flopped, nothing. <laughs> then I posted another one with Josh and it got, you know, Got a little following, following, following. And we would just do the sounds, you know, that what was trending. She was making me then dance. And then I was making Josh dance. On some of these. And I was like, whatever, you know, you just to appease her, I think, in the yeah. moment. And you have to realize when this all kind of started, I did get furloughed for like two weeks from my like corporate serious job, but then they brought me back on. And this had been That's two helpful. weeks deep of dancing TikTok. And you guys know how quick you can grow on TikTok. Like we, yeah. were, we were started, we went from like two followers to like 12,000 to 18,000, you know, to 20. Right. And it was like, oh, there's eyes on us. Right. And, and I didn't realize that. I'm like, oh, what's this <laughs> app? Like another app. And when I got back to work, everyone's like, oh, Mr. TikTok. And I'm like, oh, not I saw, me, but I saw the, funny. I saw the future. I was like, Josh, there's something here. And then I made one video surprising him in a dress. And I was like, wow. this, this is it. At the time, there weren't a lot of couples, at least that I knew of on the app. And it just seemed like the challenges and pranks of the couples that I were following on the app were doing. And I just took off from there. And then literally every day I'd be saying, be like, oh my God, here's a challenge. I'm going to surprise Josh by stealing his popcorn. Or like, it was just literally anything and everything would just right. pop up and it just make it a challenge, make it a prank. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because people that like know us personally, they're like, Abby, do you know what a prank really is? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yes, but like TikTok pranks Very are different, different than like yeah, real like life. 
prank. Right. <laughs> kind of how it started. And we know now on TikTok, it's like, oh my God, give credit, give credit. But back then in April, we were all just getting ideas from each other and it was nice and it was organic. We were all like excited to help each other. But well, now it's more competitive. Well, right? yeah, because it's, there's yeah. so many couples on there trying to keep doing what we're all trying to do here. Right. It's clearly like something that works. That's a perfect segue because what we wanted to have you here for was to talk about what it's like being a couple on TikTok, being a couple that your job is working together, being in a relationship. Because I know for the viewers, we had a FaceTime like this and really like talked about it. And it was very eye opening because it's a very unique situation that n very few people are going through and to have like another couple that's going through a, a very similar thing is great because what a lot of people see are the amazing times because there are a lot of those but there also are a lot of times when it is rough were you guys living together before quarantine Yes, we've been living together for five years now. We got married yeah. in July of 2015. Oh, okay. so, oh, almost so, married a year. so we were almost married a year, but we never have spent this much time together. And she, she time, traveled a lot. You yeah. know, so she was gone like sometimes weeks at a time. Yes. Uh, on modeling gigs and stuff. So this was like the very first time, like we were 24 seven, like together, you know, and like, I wasn't going out for my job. I was staying here. That's where I think it all started. And Josh, for us, he's always been the one to push me on social media because he had a little bit with music and he'd always be like, let's grow your following, grow your following. And then when it started to grow, we had that flip on his side where it was like, this is getting too much. You need to calm down. We, you know, We'll get there. And it was hard for me to understand because I'm like, you've been wanting this for me this whole time. And now that it's happening. So yeah. we started doing, you know, the TikTok thing. I was just on board pretty much to appease Abby at the time. And then I actually started seeing growth, right? Her account was just exponentially just taking off. And I was like, oh my gosh, like there's something here. Real tangible people going there, following. Like I did the Viddy, the Vine for my music, Facebook, like all that stuff to try to grow my music. And never have I seen growth like the TikTok mm -hmm. fandom, if you will, and yeah. the people on TikTok. So I was like, wow, there's something here. I think where it started to get a little more difficult, especially for Abby and I, you know, it was like, hey, we're going to do this now. Hey, we're going to do that. We had no schedule. You know, yeah. when you go to work, you have a schedule, you have certain things. Of course, things come up in your day and you're like, ah, all right, I have to manage this. But it became like a day-to-day -day thing. Oh, we're going to shoot now. And I'm like, I'm in the middle of like doing something. And I, what, I was trying to look for jobs and I didn't see a future in this. Cause I'm like, there's no way we're going to get paid to do this app. Right. So it was yeah. almost like this leisurely thing that I was like, this is not worth it. You know? Yeah. We're getting followers and stuff, but we're making no money. We got on TikTok in April and we didn't sign with man management till July. Yeah, so right. we went a couple months without I think we only had like making... two brand deals without management that yeah. were like, okay, amounts of money, but not enough to not like, that would survive, you yeah. know, got our, you know, got our rent paid and stuff like that. But you know, I'm on indeed like looking up job, you know what yeah. I mean? Like trying to be like, okay, well, what's next? You know, we have rent to pay. We got bills to pay. But I think where we have connected and where we can get advice off each other is we start with our age difference. You know, right. Chris is the, the TikTok. You're, you know, yeah. you're the one with the most following. I have the one with the most following, even though Josh and Ian have their own channels and they do great things and do their own things. We started this craziness basically yeah. on TikTok. And I think for us, you are 23. 23. Yes. Yeah, I'm 24 and Josh is in his thirties, Ian's in his thirties. And I think you guys had jobs and things to worry about when putting yourself on the internet. For me, I was like, oh, I don't care. I'm putting myself on the internet. I'll tell everyone I met my husband at this age and I met this and then it backfired. Right. You know, we're, right. I wasn't thinking of who's watching this, what's happening, what am I putting out there? for billions of people to see, even though we have the millions of followers, but it goes on Facebook, it goes on Twitter, it goes on this. And then it's a spiral of what's out there on the internet. And I think we had a big blow up where something backfired on us. And then that's where you were just like, I'm done, yeah. I'm out. This is not what we signed up for. And it, it could have ruined both of us. It was scary yeah. how what you put out there can be twisted like that yes. and so untrue and then just spread. Ours was Abby posted a TikTok saying, 
you know, we met when I was 23 and she was 17, but the way she worded it, it sounded like she about. moved in at 17. We got married, like, right. You know, it's just worded completely wrong. Yep. And the internet went nuts with it. I was getting these awful DMs, like Death very threats. like hurt, you know, hurtful things being said to me. And it was just like, <laughs> so de- defaming of who I am as a person and what I stand for. And I was like, this is like, it was really tragic to yeah to see that being written about, even though like, you know, deep down, like it's not true, but you know, you do think like, oh my God, other people are going to actually probably think this is true. It was really upsetting and it was tough, a tough couple of weeks. And Abby was like, literally crying. I cried for four days days, straight. And I was like trying to console. I'm like, it's fine. You know, it's whatever. But I I caused it. Like I did, even though they twisted my words, they were my words. Yeah. So I think that's where you know, the first couple months, I'm like, Oh my God, this is great. We're, and this is right when we hit a million followers on TikTok. So we did have eyes on us. Like we were growing quick on TikTok. It just pretty much seemed like, wow, well, everything's over at this point. Like, we're you know, done. It's the internet over. just like t- the trolls took over. You know, it was funny, our management at the time, because that's right when we signed, they're like, oh, that'll blow over in like a week. And yeah. <laughs> it did. The people who really believe in you and want to follow you, like are going to stay there and they're going to be your support system. And that's what we've found yeah. for the past almost a year now. I don't think you guys were big on the internet before TikTok. I wasn't either. And I was like, whoa, like this is the power of oh, the internet. Yeah. I think that's just like another important point about what it's like being in a relationship in the public eye, whether how big that public eye is, is that like everyone kind of feels like they have a say in your relationship because it's so familiar. I was talking to another friend I met through TikTok and she was like, when you came up on my For You page, I instantly felt like we were family and you were like my friends and like, yes, and that's the amazing part of it, but that's also kind of the hurtful part of it because a lot of people feel like they can comment on their friends relationships so they're instantly able to think they know every aspect when there's what's filmed and there's what's not filmed when you put stuff out and it's all representing just you and who you are then you give people the power to assume that's who you are you know what i mean i know sometimes the comments can get to me and i will talk to him about it and kind of freak out and be like people think you don't like me or people think this and i think the reason i start freaking out is because when you read something enough times you maybe start to believe it people want to feel like they're a part of it and you are a part of a part of it obviously as you were saying that the people who follow you will want to follow you and there are the people who know that and want you to flourish regardless but i think sometimes when the videos go really big you get new people who are suddenly like oh well this is my opinion on it i'm a relationship therapist and i can see that this is that and that and i'm like can you see half of 30 to 60 seconds. I'm right there with you. Because even to this day, I just posted a video and it went on a meme account on Instagram, which is terrifying because those Instagram comments are brutal. And I made the mistake of looking at the comments and it's just like, oh my goodness. Like they are commenting on stuff. The the number one thing they love to say is who's going to tell her her husband's gay. And it's sad because those are the people that are like, we love everyone. We're equal for everyone. But then they're like going to call out our relationship because my husband can joke. and Because my funny. butt looks good in yoga pants. Because Sorry. his butt looks good in <laughs> yoga pants. As soon as he's not this straight you know macho yeah. guy right. oh who's gonna tell I, yeah it's that... just a shame like i'm a very like free person yeah. <laughs> like i don't care like i'm just myself i can't believe like someone literally sits back there and is like trying to be mean about that we've gotten to that point where it's like are we putting ourselves out there too much are we do now people think this of us or that of us so i've tried to steer away and just be like okay guys this is entertainment don't mm-hmm. believe everything you see on the internet. I'm not going to post something and say this was this is fake. Mm-hmm. But please understand everything we post is for fun. Going back to when it started, we'll go back there where it was like, I would just be, Josh, we need to do this video right now. It's a trend. We need to do it right now, right now, right now. Because I'm the one posting it, editing it, getting that high of the views, the comments, the praise. Yeah. You get that feeling when you're like, oh my God, it's going viral. It's going viral. He's not getting that because he's not posting it. I'm he's not, not getting staring. that dope. Drip. He's not I'm not, getting it. Yeah, it's and, just not happening. And I became addicted, honestly. We I are mean, the same. <laughs> we are the same. So I became obsessed. And there was to a point in the summer, I was screaming, like, we need to do this video right now. Like, right now, we got to do this right now. And then I'd post a sweet, cute video. And I'd be like, oh, everything's fine. But I'm like, 
but it's not really because they didn't see me literally screaming and crying, begging him to do this video. Right. And that's where we had to ha like sit down and talk and be like, okay, if we want to continue this as a career, mm -hmm. we need to look at this as a career, not me bothering you, not me begging you. We need to be on the same page because if not, yeah. You go back to your nine to five, I'll go back to doing something and we're just done. With your partner and someone who you're intimate with and that you share space with 24 seven now, it's just different. I'm very in tune to how I wanna feel. And sometimes if I'm not somewhere, yes, I can like coach myself out of it, but it's not like I'm going to set and there's a network that I'm disappointing or that's gonna fire me if I don't do this content. The like urgency of it isn't there for me sometimes. There are moments where you're just like, if I can't meet you there, I want you to still have your fun and do what you need to do but maybe you tape something by yourself or let's just save this that we want to do together for another time. It took me a long time to understand why Josh would say no to some things, but it's like, that's him on the internet. Like that's yeah. Josh Herbert on the internet saying these things or doing this thing or doing this dance or, you know, making this baby voice or something. And for me, I'm like, oh, just do it, do it, do it. But then it's like, you know, that's going to live on the internet. No matter, even if I delete it, it's on there somewhere, somehow. Yeah. Of it's like a joint thing. It's like, yes, you're the one who has the idea and you get the kick off of producing the thing, but mm -hmm. I'm as much a part of it as he is because obviously I'm in it. And th this is where sometimes we get into moments is because like, I will care differently than he does. I love talking to Josh and Abby and we would be so down to do a part two at some point yeah, absolutely. because this is just the tip of the iceberg on what it is like and really diving into like the anomaly of a TikTok couple. It is crazy, but thank you, Josh and Abby, for speaking with us. Yeah. And remember to focus on your blooming. Thank you for yeah. watching. Oh. Love you guys. Bye, guys. Also, Ian, I don't know if Chris told you on the last YouTube video, it was so emotional. I, it was great. But your skin was glowing. Oh my God. I, every time he turned to the side, I was like, what's that highlighter? He literally, <laughs> I made him like dance to this. Oh my, oh what my was God. What was that? <sighs> It was the, or... every time you turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around looking at my, uh, you know. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You yeah, know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm just rambling here, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Fergie one. I feel like this too, so I'm like, you need, and he's She's like. She's like, act, boy, <laughs> act. Jeez. <laughs> I'm really glad I started recording right before you said that. <laughs> oh, did you really? Oh, no. I caught that in. That's great. Oh.